Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are approaching a building where the Secretary General's daughter, Carol, is held captive. Suddenly, they become aware of a painful, tingling sensation and a ringing in their ears. It's hard to walk. It feels like a big weight on me. Yeah, I can hardly move. Happy. Nora's using some kind of a ray on us. A paralyzer ray? It's worse than that. With an ultrasonic beam. Run back to the ship. Get out of its range quickly. I, I can't. I... Happy, get up. Here, I'll, I'll help you. I can't even crawl. I, my head has a thousand needles in it. If we don't get out of that beam, it'll shake us to pieces. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Sleepwalker. And now, gang, here's some terrific news. Here's how to get a pair of the Space Patrol Space Binoculars, the most unusual binoculars ever designed. You wear them like official outer space headgear. That's right, a strong elastic band holds them snugly to your eyes, leaving your hands absolutely free. Now, these are not flimsy celluloid goggles, not a mask. They're the real McCoy. Big, full-size, solid plastic binoculars you can see way off in the distance with. Overall, they're a complete five inches in width, a complete five inches in length. And when you wear them, they stand out a full three and a half inches from your eyes. Powerful? Ah, oh, you bet. These are four power binoculars with four fixed-focus, pure, lucite lenses. You can spot airplanes in the sky, watch for your dad coming home from work, read signs way off in the distance. Truly, the greatest space patrol value in all our experience. The most sensational offer we have ever made. Now, here's how to get a pair. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. If you don't agree that your space binoculars are absolutely tops, return them and the Ralston Company will cheerfully refund your money. The address again is Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Two hours ago in the Neptune City office of Interplanetary Transport Service, a small white light on a control panel flickered and changed to red. A few seconds later, the traffic supervisor of the big private passenger service clicked on his spaceophone. Space Patrol Search Command. This is the Interplanetary Transport Service, Neptune Office. Our ITS passenger ship N-157 is overdue on two quarter-hour message-to-base reports. This ship last reported at 1745 Universal Star Time on regular Terra-Neptune space lane. 900,000 BUs out of Neptune and has not reported to Space Control Terra. This office requests... Within minutes, Space Space Patrol Search Command ships fanned out from Neptune, sensitive view scopes scanning space for the missing passenger ship. Ninety minutes later, in Commander Corey's central office on Terra, Cadet Happy sits before a spaceophone, tensely waiting a report from Neptune. Happy. Nothing new so far, sir. Uh, Cut down the amplifier, Thanks. I've just got a report from the communications center from the Space Patrol search unit. They found the N-157 out beyond the Neptune orbit. What was wrong, Commander? Passengers and crew had been mysteriously put to sleep. To sleep? Why? To cover a robbery, it seems. Was the thief still aboard? No, we don't know yet. Chances are he was working with a confederate who met the passenger ship out in space and took the thief aboard. But we know what's missing. One of the passengers who was the first to revive is making quite a disturbance about it. Can't say that I blame him. He lost half a million credits. Half a million? Wow. Well, that's partly his own fault. He had them packed in an ordinary suitcase and didn't even ask for a guard. Well, why in the universe was he carrying that much money around? He's a space construction contractor named Reese Bixby. He took over the government artificial satellite job after the other contracting firm defaulted. Oh, yeah. He's the man who boasted he could finish the satellites within six months. He can probably do it, too. Well, Fortunately, he's a much better space engineer than he was a guard of his money. Well, the money isn't hit aboard the ship, then, huh? Apparently not. 
ship has been searched. The only clue so far is that two passengers are missing. We don't know who they are until all the passengers revive, so interplanetary transport can check the passenger list. And then we'll know who's missing and who took the money. Unless the thieves were traveling under assumed names, which they probably were. To me, this looks like the work of the sleepwalker. Oh, the crook who's been stealing plant payrolls by putting people to sleep. Right. But up till now, at least he hasn't committed any other form of robbery. Yeah, it seems that this sleepwalker walks in other people's sleep. Yeah, that he does. Interplanetary Transport Service, Neptune Office, calling Commander Corey, Space Patrol Headquarters, Terra. Corey here, go ahead. Well, this is Interplanetary Traffic Supervisor Jenkins, Commander. The two missing passengers are a man and a woman. The man is listed on the roster as William Knight. And the woman? Uh, my assistant is checking the names now, Commander. You hurry with that, please? William Knight. Make a note of that, Happy. Yes, sir. I have the other name, Commander. Oh, I can't believe this. What is it, Jenkins? The missing woman is the, the Secretary General's daughter, Carol Carlyle. What? It was on the amended passenger list, a last-minute change transmitted from Terra, which is why we were so long in finding out. Jenkins, stand by for further instructions. Yes, Commander. Happy, get the ship ready. We're blasting off for Neptune immediately. I wish we'd get a report from the Neptune Search Command, sir. Well, by this time, the other ship could be thousands of DUs away, huh? Yeah, and we haven't the slightest idea of what kind of ship to look Carol for. Carol shouldn't have made a trip without notifying the Space Patrol. Carol calling Cam- Commander Corey. Carol calling Commander Corey. In a miniature space phone channel. Carol, thank goodness you're safe. Oh, Buzz, I was taken off of a passenger ship inside the Neptune orbit. Yes, we know that. Happy and I are headed for Neptune now. Where are you? In the aft compartment of a private cruiser, Class C. You know the registry number? Yes, it's PCV-85. I got a look at it when it joined airlocks with the passenger ship. Then you weren't affected by the sleep gas. No, I was in my compartment. When I came out, a man grabbed me and forced me into the other ship. Well, what man? What's his name? Well, he was one of the passengers. His partner calls him Woody. Woody Knorr. Who's his partner? He was piloting a private cruiser. His name is Bob Morgan. You know where they're taking you? No, all I know is... Buzz, someone's coming. Hide your miniature space phone, Carol, but leave it on. Corey, out. I've changed vector toward their position, sir. Good, Happy. Increase our acceleration to four Gs. Came in to have a little chat with you, miss. What's your name? You mean you don't know? Why should we? It was the money we were after. Yeah, it's too bad you weren't in the lounge with the rest of the passengers. Or maybe it's a good thing. How would you like to join up with us? Yeah, we can make it very profitable for you. Nice-looking kid like you would go far in our organization. Why, of all the insulting... <clears throat> You want to play rough, huh? Well, I'll be glad to oblige you. Let go of me. Let her alone, Morgan. Just get her identification. No dame's going to slap me and get away with it. Hand me her purse. All right, Woody. Hey, hey, look at that bracelet on her arm. Jupiter Emeralds. I'll bet they'd bring in a few credits. She must be some big shot's daughter. (laughs) I've changed my mind, Woody. This dame is an extra bonus. Shut up, Morgan. Do you know who we got here? It's the Secretary General's daughter, Carol. Of all the passengers in that ship, we have to grip the one who could give us the most trouble. Let's go back and take her out front so we can watch her every second. They left the compartment. You hear the sound of their rockets in the space phone. The ship will be easier to follow on our view scope finder. I've got a rough three-point fix on their trajectory. If they keep on that vector, it'll bring them close to Venus. Got to cut down the distance between their ship and ours. If we don't get them in the view scope before they land and cut their rockets, we'll lose them. Morgan, set her down. It's Venus. By the looks of the landscape, we're near the Southwest Sea, close to the Tycho Mountains. That's right, Miss Carlyle. Nobody will ever find this hideout. Cut your rockets, Morgan, and don't overshoot the rocket port. You take the money, I'll handle the gill. Come on, we got to decide what to do with you. All right. Just sit down and relax, miss. Yeah, you can watch us count the money. (laughs) We got to reach a decision right away. What do you suggest? Well, we can't keep her here, and we can't turn her loose. She knows too much. That leaves only one thing. Do away with her. Yeah. 
But so far, we never had to resort to anything so drastic. That's our own fault. My fault? And just how do you figure that? You just keep out of this. Just leave it to a woman to spoil a man's perfect record of crime without violence. Me, Woody Nord, the sleepwalker. I pulled off dozens of robberies and never even had to slug anybody. I've got it. You can take some of this money and hire somebody else to take care of her. Morgan, have you no code of ethics? The principle is the same. Ethics. Hey, listen. Spaceship. It's a space patrol ship. It's Terra 5, Commander Corey's ship. Blast him. How did he trail us here? What are we going to do? Take it easy. I'll turn on the ultrasonic beam. Well, what will that do? Just watch. I got a scanning device on the roof. It revolves slowly. And when a beam is interrupted by a moving object, ultrasonic waves are focused on it. Ultrasonic waves? What do they do? Well, first they affect the nervous system. They paralyze any living thing within range. The more the victim moves, the more intense the vibration becomes. There is no escape. Oh, no. Finally, the vibration acts on the flesh like a million tiny scalpels. I won't use it, except that I'm forced to in self-defense. Stop showing how much you know. Let's get this over with. All right. Come to the window if you'd like to watch. I thought I saw somebody at the window up there in the hideout, Commander. They've seen us. Keep your ray gun in that holster, Happy. Suppose they start firing at us. We may be taking them by surprise. If not, well, Woody Nor has never used physical violence before in his other crimes. Let's hope he doesn't start now. If he come up here ready to shoot, he may get panicky and harm Carol. Probably figures his own best uh, chance hey, is to... Com- Commander, I, I feel sort of funny. So do I. I. A tingling sensation. There's a ringing in my ears. Do you notice it? Yes. It's not exactly a sound, yet... Hey, is, is this a pill or something? It's hard to walk. It feels like a big weight was put on me. I can hardly move. Happy. Nora's using some sort of ray on us. A paralyzer ray. Oh, it's worse than that. Look up there on the roof. See that big metal cone? It's following us. We're in an ultrasonic beam. Get back to the ship, Happy. Get out of its range quickly. Happy, get up. Here, I'll help you. Oh. Commander, I can't even crawl. My head, it... It feels like it's got a thousand needles in it. If we don't get out of this beam, it's going to shake us to pieces. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, listen to this. Poor old motor. It's got nothing to go on but ordinary fuel. I say, but listen to this. Wow, there's a motor that's supercharged. Got super fuel in it, that's why. Now, gang, you know the same is true of you. When you have ordinary fuel for breakfast, what are you? Just a putt-putt. But when you have super fuel for breakfast, well, that's when you can be a super somebody because you're supercharged. So, gang, eat the super fuel Buzz Corey has in the morning. A power breakfast with wheat checks or rice checks, the bite-sized super cereals. Good? Ah, wait till you try them. The swellest tasting cereals in the universe. And the only cereals in the universe with that modern bite-sized design. So don't be a putt-putt. Be a super somebody. Eat a breakfast that supercharges you. A power breakfast with the super cereals Rice Chex and Wheat Chex. Woody Knorr and Bob Morgan have stolen a half million United Planets credits from a passenger ship and abducted the Secretary General's daughter, Carol, because she was the only person aboard the spaceship who could identify them. However, Buzz and Happy were able to follow the thieves' spaceship by tracing through Carol's miniature spaceophone. As the commander and his cadet walked toward Knorr's hideout on Venus, Knorr turned on an ultrasonic beam. The beam could first paralyze and then destroy them. Right now, barely able to move, Buzz and Happy lie on the ground as the high-frequency sound vibrations rack them with pain. Maybe, maybe we can roll away from the beam, sir. It's getting more intense. In a few seconds, we'll be completely paralyzed. Our our ray guns, maybe we could hit the cone. Our ray guns wouldn't affect it. Wait a minute. That cone tracked us, followed us. Yes, sir. It must be controlled by an electric eye. If we can blind that eye. Blind it? 
You mean throw something at it? No. Our atomolites. Shine your atomolite on the round unit on top of the cone. I'll use mine, too. If, if I can move my arm. Got to, Abby. Quickly, while we're able to move at all. I'm, I'm getting it good. My hand is shaking so much, I, I can't hold the beam steady. It's working, though. My beam's in focus. Yeah, I've got it, sir. The cone's turning all around, back and forth and up and down. Yeah, we've confused it. Keep your atomo light on it, though. It'll find us again. Can you get up, Happy? Uh, pretty shaky, but I'll try it. Just keep your light steady. Uh, that's it. Wow. I'm as wobbly as a burned-out rocket. Come on. We've got to get in there before Noah thinks up something else. This time we won't hesitate to use our ray guns. They're getting up. You might as well give up. Buzz and Happy are more than a match for you two. Shut up! We're not two yet. Morgan, you hold him off. I'll take the girl into money. We'll slip out the back way. Oh, sure. Leave me to face the music alone. Nothing doing. Well, we both can't get away. And if I have the girl, I can force Corey to let you go. How do I know you'll do it? Don't argue, you fool. Corey and the cadet are pretty shaky from the sonic beams. You can handle them. I'll take Corey's ship, and when you get out, you take mine. There they are. Hold him off. All right, miss. Let's go. Come on. Stop it. Let go of me. Oh, shit. Come on. Oh. Hey, Woody, you got a rig up. Now, use that iron bar and lock this door behind you. Once more, Happy. <laughs> that did it. Wow, oh, I'm so weak, I can hardly stand. I think easy, Happy. They're probably hiding down this hallway. Hey, I think I hear somebody in this room, sir. I'll open the door. You cover me from the side. Yes, sir. Empty. Mm. Try the next one. Oh, happy. I'll continue searching the house. You go out and see if there's a back door. They may try to speak. Smoking rockets were too late. They made it to their ship. Their ship, nothing. Look out the window. Terra 5. They took our ship. And we'll take theirs. I don't think you will. Commander, look out. <coughs> Why, you... Give me that bar. Stand back, uh, you... <coughs> Oh, shoulder. Next time it'll be your head, just like the commander got, only not so easy. All right, now I'll take those guns. No. Hey, hey, the commander's hurt bad. He'll be all right. Well, cadet, let's carry out the commander's orders. Huh? He wanted to get in our ship, so pick him up. Come on, you're going to have to carry him. Morgan to Nor. Morgan calling Nor. Nor here? What happened? Everything worked out fine. I have two passengers. They're uh, resting secured back aft. Uh, good work, Morgan. You blasted off without any difficulty then. A little. Everything's fine now. What's next? Say, if we're going to talk business, switch over to the scramble circuit. Okay. Go ahead. Well, we'll rendezvous near the uncompleted artificial satellite. What about our passengers? Well, unload yours on the satellite and spacesuits. And without the jetpacks. Then I'll transfer to our ship. What about the girl? I'll leave her in Terra 5. All comfortable and secure. Except for one little thing. All right, Corey, cadet. Get into the airlock. You aren't going to drop us off in empty space. If I was going to do that, I wouldn't have shut off the rocket. When you open the outer hatch, you'll step right off onto the unfinished artificial satellite, the one swinging around Venus. What about Carol? Is Nora going to leave her with us? She won't be far away. Now get out. Close your helmets and step out. I want to know what you're going to do with Carol. You're going to get a blast of this ray gun if you don't move. I'll tell you about Carol when you're outside the ship. There's Terra 5, sir. But why is Nor stopping it so far from the satellite? Happy stand clear of Morgan's ship. I think he's getting ready to blast away from the space platform. That's right, Corey. Gonna pick up Nor and we'll be on our way. What about Carol? We're leaving her in Terra 5, several hundred yards away. But we're leaving a time bomb in the ship with her. What good is that going to do you? If the ship's destroyed, there'll be no chance of it being sighted by another ship. No one will look for you, too, on this unfinished space platform. Not for weeks. Why can't you give Carol a chance? Put her here with us. Wouldn't you prefer to have her go quickly instead of suffering from hunger and thirst? Besides, Nora and I like to think of you two watching, waiting for that explosion. <laughs> It'll give you something to think about while you wait for your own finish. Nora's ship is nearly out of sight, sir. Yes, the contemptible cowards. And there's Terra 5, so close, and yet it might as well be several DUs away for all we can do about it. Commander, this is Woody Nor. With just a final fond word of farewell. Nora, listen. Did you really leave a bomb in our ship? Well, you just wait and see. Uh, incidentally, 
I can barely hear your signal from the spacesuit transmitter. I doubt that a spaceship could hear you or reach you in time to save the girl. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't forget to keep your magnetic boots turned on full or you'll float off into nowhere. Uh, goodbye, Commander. Knorrot. Oh, the dirty rats. We're about as far from the regular space lanes as we could be. Yeah, that's why the satellite is being built here. Well, if we only had our jetpacks. But here we are with no way of moving off this platform in a set direction. Sitting here in a scrap pile of tied-down metal, waiting for that bomb... Abby, to... wait a minute. That's not a scrap pile, not to us. It's rocket fuel. Rocket fuel? Why, it's just chunks of metal. Uh-huh. Here's a big, broad plate of endurium. That'll serve as a space raft. Space raft? Get busy and pile some of these scraps on the plate. Well, sure, sir, but I don't get it. We're going to make a man-powered rocket. A man-powered rocket? Remember that summer on Lake Azure when you stood up in the canoe and threw a rock at a leaping fish? Do I? I went over backwards out of the canoe into the lake. Exactly. You demonstrated Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Sure. That's the principle that rockets and all spaceships operate on. Right. Spaceship moves forward because molecules of fuel are forced out of the rocket engines. This big flat endurium plate is our ship. You and I are the engines, and these chunks of metal are the fuel. Hey, I get it. We toss the chunks off our raft in the opposite direction from where we want to go. Right, let's get busy. Don't know how much time we've got left. There. That's enough scrap metal, Happy. Get on the raft and brace yourself firmly. Yes, sir. Now, let's throw together and smoothly, or we'll zigzag. Now, give us a start by pushing away from the satellite with my hand. Make sure your magnetic boots are firm on the raft or you'll be in trouble. We're moving. Hey, just like pushing away from a pier in a boat. That's not very fast, but we'll gain speed. Now start throwing. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's not going much faster. No, but with each throw, we gain acceleration. One, two, three. One, two, three. Gee, sir... Look how close we are to the ship. Yes, but we're not heading for the airlock. Throw off the right corner this time. That'll turn it. One, two, three. Yeah, that heads are right, sir. Yeah, we can stop now. The raft will coast at this velocity. We don't want to hit the ship too hard. It's going to be quite a bump as it is. And if that bomb goes off now, it's just too bad for all three of us. Brace yourself, Happy. <laughs> wow. All right, open the outer hatch. Let's hurry. Now, quickly into the airlock. Now, close it so we don't let the air out of the ship. Into the ship. Carol. Carol, where's the bomb? Open your faceplate, Happy. She can't hear you. Oh, oh Buzz. Happy. Yeah. Oh, where's the bomb? It's in the next compartment. I've been trying to get loose from these ropes. I'll get it. Here it is. You want to heave it out the airlock, sir? That won't be necessary, Happy. I've cut off the time mechanism. Oh, what a relief. I've been lying here expecting every second to be the last. Now we've got to get Nor and Morgan. Do you have any idea where they're headed? Well, I remember Woody Nor saying something about taking part of the money to a place in Lowell City on Mars. You remember where in Lowell City? Well, uh, let me see. I, I, I think I can, but well, I, I'm so upset right now. All but... right, Carol, you relax. Happy now, blast off for Lowell City. All right, pull the surface car up here, Morgan. Okay. That little city sure looks good to me. Hey, you sure this guy can get rid of these credits for us without getting caught? Oh, yeah. He's got a perfect setup. He spreads the stolen credits among the bank's funds, gives us other money for the hot stuff, less than percent for his services. Okay, let's get out of the car. I'll bring the loot. Help you with your luggage, gentlemen? Oh, Glory. Uh, run for it, Morgan. Oh, no, you don't. Let's go this one's for that sonic beam. If that's a gun you're reaching for, drop it. I've got Morgan, sir. Hang on to him, Happy. Get up, Noir, on your feet. All right, all right. Don't need me anymore. You got off that space platform, but how? Didn't the ship explode? No. We got to the bomb about two minutes before it was set to go off. Somebody rescued you. It's impossible. There wasn't a ship near enough to get you in time. No living person could help you off that satellite. Yeah, you're right, Noor. No living person did. But somebody did help us. One of the greatest scientists who ever lived. A man whose name was Sir Isaac Newton. An exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. 
But first, this is your commander, Cadet Happy, and Captain Dick Tufel, gang. We're going to tell you how to get a pair of those sensational new Space Patrol space binoculars that you can see way off in the distance with. Now remember, you don't have to hold these binoculars up to your eyes. You wear them on your head like outer space headgear. They're form-fitted to your eyes, and a strong elastic band holds them snugly on. Now, these are not flimsy little celluloid goggles or a mask. They're real, full-size, four-power binoculars with four pure lucite lenses. Real binoculars, five inches long, five inches wide, made out of solid black plastic with a bright red leather-like trimming. And when you wear them, these big, handsome space binoculars stand out from your eyes a full three and a half inches. Remember, these are four-power binoculars. This means they make objects way off in the distance look four times closer. You can spot airplanes in the sky, boats on the water, far-off objects on land. Your space binoculars will smallify, too. Yes, sir, when you reverse them, they make things look real little and far away. Lots of fun, right, Hap? You bet. And boy, oh boy, these binoculars have that real outer space look. Gosh, when people see you wearing your space binoculars, why, they'll think you just stepped out of a rocket ship from Mars. Gang, send for these valuable Space Patrol space binoculars today. Without a doubt, the greatest value we have ever offered on Space Patrol. To get a pair, do this. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in USA and may be withdrawn at any time. If you don't think your space binoculars are really tops, return them and the Ralston Company will refund your money without question. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. A strange fever, the wandering fever, has struck the planet Neptune, and people are leaving by the thousands. Happy, who's been on Neptune with the commander, has caught this strange fever and taken off alone in a spaceship. As he flies under the influence of the fever, he mutters to himself and is unable to heed the voice of Commander Corey coming over the ship's spaceophone receiver. It's beautiful out here in space. All the planets of the solar system and the stars beyond. Commander Corey calling Cadet Happy. Listen, Happy. There's that voice again. Over and over. So far away. So far away. Happy, this is urgent. Listen. The ship you're flying has no landing control unit. Oh, why don't I go to Pluto? Yes. Yes, I'll head for Pluto. Happy, listen to me. You're in serious danger. If you try to land that ship, you'll crash. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story... The Deserted Planet, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Ken Mayer, Virginia Hewitt, and Bela Kovach. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again presents the new exciting Space Patrol. And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC TV station. <laughs>